In a universe where all creatures are blighted and infernal. There is one man who can save the world. From evil. Buddies, some nuts guy here. Hope you're having an awesome day so far, and welcome back for more RL Craft. Hope you enjoyed the goofy little intro. Hope you enjoy the rest of the video because I did put about 17 bajillion bajillion hours into it. And with that in mind, I'm gonna do the thing and ask you to do the thing. If you could hit that like button for me, I'd really appreciate it. And without further ado, let's get started with day one. This adventure started off like many other adventures, collecting rocks, punching gravel to gain flint, smashing that flint on a rock to get a flint shard, and crafting ourselves a flint knife. We use that flint knife to stab some grass, get some plant fiber, make some plant string, and create a flint hatchet. Now we can chop down some wood, so we're going to collect some wood and turn that wood into planks and sticks by putting the logs and planks in our left hand and putting the axe in our right hand, pointing at a corner and spamming right click on the top. We can use the stones that we collected earlier to make a stone pickaxe. Now we've got a bunch of cobblestone that we can make a whole bunch of stuff, including an axe, a spear and a stone shield. So we'll now have a full set of tools and some nice weapon and a shield for our defensive capabilities. We're looking uh, we're looking pretty good now here for day one collect some other stuff and things including the furnace and the coal in it and some free sticks from the planks placed here anytime you see logs or planks placed directly on the ground that's free planks and free sticks you just right click on it with your axe now it's time for passive killing we'll need all the wool that we can gather to sell to fishermen and fletchers and leather to craft and reforge our tool belt and crossbow. We go with the combat specialty once we get to level five. Some people go crafting early and then switch to combat later, but that's not how I roll. We also grab some sugar cane for the sugar for our speed rings later and see a four tower dungeon in the distance, which we are going to take note of and maybe come back to later. Time to cook up some food, chop some more trees, gather some sand so that we can craft bottles for our drinking purposes. And then it's time for our first sleep or our first battle. We time our blows between the enemy's shots, holding up our shield, blocking their projectile, and then getting two or three strikes, and then waiting for the next projectile. Blocking it and getting our next two, three strikes in, playing it cleverly, playing it smart, and victory. Celebratory wiggle, what a way to end our first day. Day two. I wake up and choose violence. We spot a local ruffian, a rare stinging skeleton of WTF Imba. Funnily enough, he's being attacked by a local group of wolves, and we join the fray as we're gonna need their assistance to take down this what the fuck Imba skeleton. He's got poisonous and regen. We've got no defense against the poison. It's slowly but surely ticking us down, and his regen is ticking him back up, making this a very difficult fight for day two. However, he seems to be doing some weird stuff, eating around at high speeds and not really taking the time to shoot us with his bow, which is convenient for us. Our health is ticking down low and another shake of excitement as we take down our second victim now it's time to relax and have a little drink by the lakeside i must tend to my wounds after our battle so we make some bandages and heal up our body parts with the experience gained from our battles we increase our defensive skills and our attack skills as well as our mining skill to allow us to collect the local iron so that we can craft stronger tools, weapons, and armor. As the nomadic stage of our adventure progresses, we craft ourselves a cart to carry all our spoils of looting and war. 
we spot an iron node across the lake and make our way towards it while avoiding these creepy spiders in the darkness. We're going to need this iron for our armor and our tools and our weapons, although we do already have an iron spear. So we craft ourselves some iron armor to give us better protection. As we wait for night, we decide to farm some birch for the paper for later purposes and farm a little bit of XP off of the local innocent piggies. Sleep time. Day three. Remembering that we'll need the ink sacks of a squid to help us to create the antique atlas, we gather one of those quickly and then proceed to get some free planks from this tree here. While killing some innocent chickens, we get jumped by a banshee, which absolutely annihilates us. Sag. So in day three, after our tragedy, we start from scratch yet again, retaining but only the memory of the skills that we had gained in our prior life. So we go back to collecting rocks, getting some basic tools, gathering some coal and iron, both for the experience and to create better tools and weapons while also making friends with a local pixie. Night is rapidly approaching and we need a lot more experience, so we farm some sheep to get the wool for our sleeping bag and more experience for our skills. And our second reaper appears! With our foe felled, we craft a sleeping bag, ready for night. However, we're not quite sleepy yet, so we do a little bit of silex fishing and spot a dragon in the distance. We'll be sure to avoid that. So we kill our couple of silex, get a couple of silex meat and some lapis for future purposes. And our picks and buddy comes to bed with us. Day four. We're just minding our own business, collecting some wild berries for wine later down the line, and we die. What the F? So, back to square one. Collecting rocks, flint, smashing the flint, getting sticks, making a flint knife, getting plant fiber, plant string, flint hatchet, chopping logs and planks, and dragon. Dragon in the distance. Chillin' dragon in the distance. Stone tools, bad parkour, <laughs> collecting iron, collecting all of the iron, seeing spooky things in the distance, and going back to killing poor passive sheeps. Taking note of dragon fire in the distance to avoid, and this zombie says, hey, stop killing those poor passive sheeps. So we make a quick getaway and build a too tall tower for our defense. Realizing we haven't actually made a weapon yet this life, we decide to make ourselves a simple wooden sword, which will hopefully do the trick. It does not. This man gives us weakness, meaning that we deal less damage, which is actually zero or below, with this crappy wooden sword. So with our iron smelting, we decide to make an iron warhammer, as warhammers have armor penetration. And this is much more effective on our weakness inflicting buddy. For our honorable victory, we are awarded much XP and some chainmail leggings with protection too. So we go back to killing more sheep. With the remaining iron we've collected, we decided it's time to make some proper armor with a iron chest plate and helmet, as well as an iron shield to add to our arsenal. Reflecting on the day and the experience we've gained, we decide to boost our defensive skill, preparing a sleeping bag and resting for the night. Day five. We still need to make our antique atlas, so we kill a squid for the ink sack, as well as a few silex to get the silex meat, which we will need to tame a rock later down the line. We spot a couple of dragons in the distance, keeping note of where they are so we can avoid going that way. And then realize we're actually chilling next to a waystone, which is super handy. 
As we're looking for ways to gain some experience, we noticed a small structure in the distance. This is a couple of zombie spawners in it and will be a good place for us to farm some early game experience to get the ball rolling on our skills and perhaps even leveling up our L menu a bit as the experience we gain per kill is greatly increased. So we set up a couple of little holes that will allow us to attack our enemy without them escaping and getting onto us. And as the chances of dying at this early stage of the game are pretty common, we decide to put all of our existing loot in a storage and make ourselves a little spawn point just in case. Now it's on to shin hacking. With a little bit of face hacking too. <laughs> However, after a while, the enemy's thorns are hurting us pretty bad and we decide it's getting late and it's time for a little sleep. Day six, and the XP farming continues. My health was getting low, so I decided to bank my levels into defense, which is a good idea because we immediately die. To pretty much spend the majority of the day chilling here, face hacking, farming experience, boosting our levels and dying, and then rinse and repeating. However, amidst this cycle of death, experience, experience, and death, we also achieve life in the form of heart crystal shards and heart containers, which increase our maximum health. After a long day of fighting and dying, we want nothing more than to just have a nice night's rest. However, a reaper says no! I don't have my spear shield with me, so we make a quick getaway, run in a big loop, get some distance with the reaper, gather my spear and shield, and then we are ready for combat. Day seven. More XP farming, more face chopping, more heart crystal getting, more level leveling, more face chopping, more XP farming, more weapon making, more efficient face chopping with new weapon that has cleave, more many, many experience gaining. And amidst all of that, we realize something odd. The local dragon has died. Who has done this? We'll have to investigate, but for now, it is sleep time. Day 8. With the zombie spawners fully cleared, we check our spoils. Golden pet armor. Huzzah. We do, however, have another heart crystal, putting us up to 3 currently. Make that 4. As you can tell, we're very excited. Here's a quick recap of my skills here on day 8. And now it's time to investigate this mysterious dragon death. We farm the gold out of his den for potion ring creation and reforging purposes, as well as checking the loot in the chest, taking any iron or iron armor that we find there, which we can smelt down for more iron. Fortunately, we got that iron because the quickest way to get up to this dragon will most likely be water bucketing all the way up. So we proceed to make a bucket and make our way up to the top. However, night is here, and we are a little bit wary. There doesn't seem to be any evidence as to how this dragon died, so we gather the scales, bones, heart, and skull. With only one enemy camping my cart, I prepare for an easy fight. And jump! However, he's joined by a second foe immediately after his demise. This fellow is a little bit stronger vengeance on his belt. However, it doesn't seem to hurt me, which is quite fortunate. He does get a little bit of a slap there, though, and then dies. Sleepy time. Day 9. With several enemies still remaining from the night before, Day 9 kicks off with combat.
After killing several foes, we thought we could relax and do some fishing, but alas, a reaper appears. Day nine is really giving us no breaks, as shortly after that, we're assaulted by a couple of skellies in the darkness of a tree, and one of them destroys our cart. So as we assess the danger and whether or not we can retrieve the loot from our cart, which is fairly substantial, we get struck by lightning and try and make a quick getaway. A zombie is upon us, however, and we realize we have no choice but to fight. And die. Exhausting day. Time for sleep. Day 10. We managed to collect all of our lost loots and get it back in our cart. So, we continue on our adventure, spotting another dragon in the distance, for which we are going to keep our distance, and then see what we believe to be a friendly outpost, showing visible excitement there. So we climb the mountain, and another dragon appears just ahead of us. So we rethink our steps and figure out what we want to do here. Boldly, we continue forward and immediately regret it as the dragon starts to rain fire down upon us. However, we manage to make a quick getaway and escape into a nearby cave, where we are promptly jumped by a floating shrubbery that shoots lasers from its face. However, floating shrubberies are no match for me. Once again, however, our cart had been destroyed, so we go back to collect our loot thinking that we might dig ourselves a little safety hole just in case the dragon attacks. But the area is protected. What does this mean? This powerful force even prevents us from placing blocks, which we need to do to be able to build our sleeping bag to rest for the night. Day 11, and we realize what we originally thought was a friendly outpost is in fact the College of Evil. Forgetting that we need to rush back to our cart loot before it despawns, we get in a fight with a couple of zombies. However, I notice this guy is sticky, so I whip out a book and hit him with a book so that I drop my book from a sticky effect instead of my weapon. Before I get a chance to recover from my previous fight, his mini-me arrives for vengeance. This fellow has ghastly, though he starts throwing fireballs at me. My health is decreasing swiftly, but I block just in time to defend his next fireball of ghastly attack and survive with half a heart. Remembering my poor cart loot, I rush up to check, and it is all despawned. What a silly man I am. So... We circumvent the dragon nearby and find ourselves a village as night falls, sleeping in one of the villagers' beds. Day 12. We assess our situation and the College of Evil and the dragon and decide that here is a good place to live. Why not? So we dig ourselves a little hobbit hole, which will be our first home. It seems the dragon and the college are not allies, as the dragon has already lit the college on fire. Now that we have a hole to call our home, we go out exploring, searching for loots. And what do we come across? One of the best early game structures that allows us to get a full set of diamond armor, along with some additional iron and gold ingots from smelting down these other sets. After we've collected some loots, we head home, and we find an unwelcome visitor. There's a chicken on our bed. We shall name him Fred. Fuck you, Fred. Ah, we're eating fillet Oh, Fred tonight. Night is falling and mobs are spawning. We're hearing some spooky sounds outside our base. So we decide to block the entrance as we don our diamond armor. Check to see what's outside and decide, nah, let's go to sleep. Day 13, and we farm Fred's friends for their feathers. Having obtained a decent number of feathers, it's time to make some bolts. 
as we have a giant reptilian chicken to take down now. So we make ourselves a crossbow, take our bolts out, and start firing upon the green dragon that is guarding the College of Evil. And he takes two shots and dies, which I thought was rather odd, but I'll take it. As dusk is falling, we wander over to collect our loots from our felled foe. Once all of the scales and bones and hearts and skull are obtained, we go to sleeps. Day 14. We loot the dragon's roost of all the gold, iron, emeralds, and obsidian, as well as the books and cobwebs that we can cut into string to sell to Fletcher's and fishermen. Then we realize that there's another target for us. So we get ourselves a good angle and start firing. After many shots, the dragon finally notices us and shoots a projectile in our direction, so we retreat swiftly. Fortunately, our reactions were fast enough, and we don't take much damage. But we're not quick enough for this. Several cinders spawn and chase us down. One of them is a variant with double the movement speed, and we simply can't escape. We can't mine into the wall because the area is protected, and we die. By the time we get back to our loot, the cinders have despawned, fortunately, and we go back about our business, finishing off this drag. However, a little bit more carefully this time. Success. Victory. Carefully judging the gap below us, we jump. And die. Unfortunately, we forgot that crakes are hostile if you're sprinting. We rush back over to recover our loot, make a sleeping bag, and sleep. Day 15. We loot the dragon's roost and the dragon itself. Then we head home and make ourselves a little automatic furnace so that we can smelt all of the armor that we gain from these recent dragon dens. Having used all of our bolts on those last few dragons, we find more of Fred's friends and farm them for their feathers. We also happen to find a floating fur bag. As dusk falls, we assess whether we want to risk our life for a little bit of experience and decide, nope, and we sleep. Day 16. We need more leather for our tool belt reforging and our quiver, so we farm some cows and take their skin. Then we notice both a dragon and a village. One thing we want and one thing we don't want. Sneaking into the village to steal the wood out of these chests here at this little village structure, we try and make sure we don't get noticed by the dragon, and we sneakily and carefully loot all of the things that we possibly can. Melons, armor, books, compass, a new crate, some redstone, an anvil, and magma blocks. But the game says no. No magma blocks for you, Satch. We decide we've been running around on foot for long enough, so it's time to tame a Mr. Horsey. Keeping a careful eye on the local dragon, we suit up Mr. Horsey with a saddle and test his speed, and he is not a very fast boy. So, we decide to tame another Mr. Horsey. However, while we're doing so, it seems the dragon has lit this structure on fire and cinders are starting to spawn. Night is falling, so once we've tamed Mr. Horsey, we decide to sleep. Day 18. Now that we have a fast Mr. Horsey, we feel confident on taking out a dragon in the open ground. If we get in trouble like that griffin over there, we can simply speed away, carried off by Mr. Horsey. After a brief battle, the dragon goes down, and we retrieve our dragon loots, and immediately stumble upon another dragon literally right next to that. So, we start taking out this one as well. 
However, in the midst of repositioning for that fight, we find ourselves a tier 5 dragon den. What is this? Dragon Central? Back to the dragon fight, and we're actually in a pretty poor position here. And as we're fleeing, Mr. Horsey dies. Sag. This battle is getting out of hand. Cinders are spawning. There have been casualties. And the dragon is still living. More and more cinders spawn. And we rush to escape. But we get trapped looking for our shield. And finally, we defeat our pursuer. Fueled with the anger for our fallen friend, we finally get vengeance for Mr. Horsey and celebrate by letting off a few fireworks that we found. Thinking I was in the all clear, I let my guard down and get jumped by a final cinder with two hearts on my head. Is this the end of me? Yes. Yes, it is. We recover our loot and sleep for the night. Day 19. We finally make ourselves an atlas, something we should have done a little while ago, as well as making a set of dragon armor for when we hit defense level 24. But we have to make it two-tone because we don't have enough scales. Time to tame a new Mr. Horsey. We start exploring and find a strange structure in a little hole at the bottom of a river. Realizing that that is a doom-like or a roguelike dungeon, we say, nope. GTFO Hunter there. Find yourselves another dragon which we'd like to take out to reforge our new dragon armor. But we don't have our crossbow with us. Risk our lives for some leather. And try to sleep and realize we didn't bring a sleeping bag or any wool. So, so we kill a few poor sheeps and make ourselves a sleeping bag for the sleeping times. Day 20. We wake up to a creepy trumpet-wielding invisible man watching us while we sleep. So naturally, we have to take him out. We soon stumble upon another small structure with a couple of zombie spawners and get set up to farm some more juicy, juicy experience. We make a bed to set a spawn and then get to face slash ankle hacking. However, like a silly billy, Apparently, we didn't set our spawn when we made the bed. Very silly indeed. Because when this ninja zombie teleported out, we died and were sent back to our base. Bruh. Well, it's nighttime. Our loot can wait. Sleep time. Day 21. We returned to collect our dropped loot and continued farming its speed pretty much for the entirety of the day. No other incidents occurred, and it was quite fruitful indeed. We hit defense level 24, and were able to don our first ever set of dragon armor, and went back to farming. After a lucrative XP farming day, we sleep. Day 22. We want to finish up the XP farm here, but got jumped by a zombie flanker with ninja who teleported behind us. We used the tree to jump over his head, hopped backwards while keeping at a distance with knockback from our spear attacks, made our way to the water so that he couldn't advance on us, and finished him off. After cleaning the rest of the zombies, we made our way through the swamp as we wanted to collect slime balls. Now, I was being a bit of a silly billy with my inventory here and stepped into the poison and <laughs> nearly died, kind of, almost. Silly me. Sleep time. Day 23 it was a busy day. We killed aspids and collected slime. We collected some redstone from this structure here. Found ourselves a twerking sea serpent. What the hell? Had a fight with a spooky spider that... Honestly, nearly got the better of us. And we saw a creepy man in the distance who started to run towards us, and we didn't like that, so we left. We started killing some of Fred's estranged cousins for their feathers. 
We found ourselves a waystone and headed home to make potion rings of speed with the redstone we just collected and the sugar we had collected earlier, and then reforged them to undying with the gold that we got from the dragon's nest. Decided to upgrade to diamond tools and make ourselves a grappling hook, which is frankly one of the best items in the game. Finally made ourselves a quiver, which we probably should have made earlier, and then it was time for sleeps. Day 24, and we wanted to review our skills so far. Upgraded to a diamond shield, and went off to fight some crakes, which honestly went worse than I was expecting. However, as a result of running away, we stumbled across this little lapis structure, which honestly will give us all the lapis that we need, probably for the entirety of our adventures. There was yet another dragon, and we still needed to reforge some of our dragon armor, so we decided to take him out. But we lost sight of him, so we decided to finish off the crakes that we started the fight with earlier. And this time it went just a little bit better. <laughs> then a fight with the skelly was rudely interrupted by the same dragon we had shot at previously. I guess he didn't like it, so we ran for our lives. And there was a swarm of tremors and crakes and a dragon who then fortunately disengaged. We defeated the Tremor, but it spawned an Argus, and not only that, it was a variant. Now this was a bad situation for us. These guys are tough, they're fast, they have projectiles, they fly, and when they hit you, they give you instability, which throws you around all over the place. A sticky skelly comes over and pulls our weapon out of our hands, and we're slowly back away with our shield up, trying to get distance from this shit show that is a fight. The Argus comes in to re-engage, and we are very low on health. We grappling hook, trying to get to safety, desperately seeking refuge under a tree, hoping that it will stop the projectiles and give us a chance to heal. But the Argus comes in for the melee and finishes us off. After recovering our loot, we decide that's enough for one day. Sleep time. Day 25. Leaving that battleground behind us, we go searching for something a little bit more peaceful. We find ourselves a village, and we loot it for everything useful. Especially the melons. It had been a long, uneventful day of traveling, so we sleep. Day 26. It seems we didn't sleep soon enough, though, because zombies had spawned and started turning all of the villagers into zombie villagers. What a shit show. The Aegis went in for the defense, and I thought to myself, I must help defend this village, for it was my presence here that put it in danger. And I immediately got clapped pretty bad, so I escape up the church and take refuge at the top. I rain arrows down upon them with my crossbow, hoping to help in any way that I can. But the Aegis have gone down, and it is just me left defending. Fortunately, while I was healing, reinforcements arrived, and we fought together to defeat the zombie villagers that had once been the villagers of this village. Very profound statement. I know. <laughs> Even with the combined defense of the Aegis and I, things were looking hairy, so I decided to get the heck out of there with my remaining one and a half hearts, and craft myself a second speed ring, and reforge with gold. Sleep time. Day 27. We return to the village to continue the defense, but it seems like the zombie villagers left to bother somebody else. Nice. So, off we go on our adventures. I see a useful structure in the distance, which can have some okay loots. We get some sapphire, silver, and a med kit, as well as some other heals, which are quite useful. We see a family of rabbits and decide to moider them for their feet. And then stumble across quite a sad sight. What a small, small dragon. Now, Grey Dragon Scales are some of my favorites, so of course, once we find a Grey Dragon, we decide we must take it down. It takes all afternoon and every bolt we have, and yet the beast still flies. Without the resources to make any more bolts, we'll have to move on. Bruh. Night has fallen, and like a silly boy, we didn't bring a sleeping bag. It's a long run back to the village. Fortunately, we have speed too, and we move our little legs as fast as we can, avoiding all the mobs that are starting to spawn. And there's a dragon in our way as well. We're going to have to run right under its path, hoping against hope that it doesn't see us. We decide to whip out our water bucket just in case we get lit on fire. We need to move any mobs away, but it looks safe. 
as we run through the grasslands and finally make it to the village, make ourselves a sleeping bag, and sleep. Day 28, and it's happened again. Zombies have spawned and are turning the remaining villagers in this village. I feel slightly bad that my shenanigans have caused this village to be essentially completely turned into zombies. However, I still must fight to protect myself and whoever might remain in this village. After a long battle and some decent teamwork between me and the Aegises, we eventually clear out all of the remaining zombie villagers and leave the village safe once again, if not with a few less citizens. After a long day filled with combat, we're happy to finally sleep. Day 29 is a fairly uneventful day compared to the recent past. We kill ourselves a couple of crakes for the experience. And then make our way across the ocean, stopping by at this floating raft here to steal an enchanting table and an ender eye. After much rowing, we reach new shores and a new village. Hopefully we can keep this one safer than the last. Sleep time. Day 30. This village had a library, so we hopped in through the back and spoke to the librarians to check if they had any good enchants. They did not. I found a couple of sirens in weird positions, then headed back home to the waystone, made some bolts, made myself a iron canteen, and then a dragon canteen, which probably I should have made a while ago. Headed back to the village to deal with the local sirens. After my first shot, I realized that all the villagers had hearts and spent a moment laughing at them. Then proceeded to take out the sirens. All was going well until this one caught me in a cobweb. Damn cobwebs. My worst enemy. Nothing else of note happened that day, and we went to sleep. Day 31. We got distracted by a crake, and, well, it was actually kind of convenient that we did, because after we took it out, we noticed another village in the distance across the ocean. We went back to finish looting the first village and got jumped by a Zephyr. These guys can be a pain in the butt, but fortunately, we managed to take it out with ease. We knew that we wanted to farm the books from the library, so to help us in that endeavor, we decided to climb up this cliff and gather some prismarine shards and crystals so that we could craft ourselves a haste ring or two to help us mine the books faster. We then spent the rest of the afternoon chopping books and sleeping. Day 32. After having farmed all the books, we sorted out our inventory and headed over to the nearby village across the water. An IRA tried to jump us and we said, nope, not today, sir. This village also had a library, so we continued to farm more books. The reason we want so many books, of course, is to sell to villagers for the XP and the emeralds. And after another long day of avoiding hypothermia, as this village was in the desert, and farming books, we slept. Day 33. We spent most of this day, well, honestly, spent most of this day sitting in holes with water in them to try and not die from the excruciating temperature of this desert village. It was, um, intriguing. So we went back home, sorted out all our books in our inventory, made ourselves an anvil so we could use some of the basic enchanting books we'd found, and enchanted our pickaxe with fortune 2 and efficiency 4. Ate some bread and went to sleep. Day 34. This one started off with some crate killing. Well, some attempted crate killing, because apparently this crate was bloody invincible and just refused to die. So we said, screw this, I'm out of here. And found ourselves a new village with a bounty board and a bounty we could do. Some dirt for some emeralds. Nice. Why not, hey? I handed in my bounty, took my emeralds and gold nuggies, threw them on the floor, did some string trading with a fisherman to get more experience in emeralds, and went to sleep. Day 35. Found ourselves some librarians, where we sold some of the books that we had gained, but found no decent enchants. Got a magenta sleeping bag, very important, and found ourselves a battle tower, 
So we set up a farm with a spawn point, a chest to store our loot, and proceeded to block off the f entranceway of the first couple of floors so that mobs wouldn't jump down on us. Deciding that it might be the good idea to cheese the loot from the top of the tower just in case anything went sour and bad and we ended up not being able to get this loot later, we figured it might be a good idea to just go up and grab it first things first. And this weird thing happened where the chest looked massive and... Well, the zombie came over to inspect what we were doing, and we said, Excuse me, sir, can you back the fork off? I'm busy over here. I grabbed the first chest and rappelled down the battle tower, placing it a little bit lower down in a spot where we could open it without alerting the golem, then went back up for the second one. But a zombie came flying at me with ghastly and blew it up, and uh, I went back to the top to put out the fire and rescue the loot before it despawned, which was no problem at all. I grabbed my water and rappelled down to the first chest that we had found, checking all the loots that we had gotten from that endeavor. I stashed all this away before going to sleep. Of course, in the magenta sleeping bag, because that's important. Day 36, and now came phase two of the operation, getting the rest of the loot from the battle tower. We slowly but surely made our way up, making sure not to aggro mobs, and emptying all of the chests of the good loot that we could possibly find. Excuse me, sir. Nothing particularly amazing or useful, but we did grab a recall potion and some other steves before getting knocked by a Dijin and having to clutch save our life with a grappling hook, which honestly nearly killed us anyway. And thus began phase three, where we were going to farm as much experience as we possibly could from this battle tower, hopefully as safely as possible. And of course the RL craft god said, safe here, have a mob event. However, we were tucked away quite well and figured we could mostly ignore the mob event. Night had fallen as well, but because we were in this little spot, we figured we might as well just spend the night farming away. And as we did have a limit for 100 days only to complete the entire game, having any opportunity where we can actually stay awake during night and gain some benefit that way in relative safety was a pretty good idea. And by relative safety, I of course mean slowly but surely dying to all the ridiculous effects from every single mob being infernal, poisons and vengeance and thorns on the armor they had, wither and, well, anything else you can think of. I wanted to give myself multiple access points, so I thought I was being clever, put another hole here, and surprise, teeny tiny little zombie, come to take my life. In this tiny pocket of death, there was no escape, I had to fight. And this little bugger was so darn fast that ultimately it was a tough fight, but he slowly but surely brought my health lower and lower. I could hardly get a hit on him. I was trying to block and get a hit and block and get a hit, and it just did not quite work out. It was a slow and painful death by a thousand cuts. I got spawn camped by this dick of a rock, but I clutched a save with an MLG water bucket. Then immediately died. It was getting a little messy around my spawn point, so I decided to retreat and find a place to sleep. Day 37, and I was back at the shin hacking, farming as much as experience as we possibly could, trying to be a little bit more clever, a little bit less causing myself to die. And uh, I was actually going fairly well with much, much juicy XP being gained. This was a much more successful day, and I went to sleep in my magenta sleeping bag, feeling quite good about myself. Day 38. I was feeling quite clever this day, so I decided to trap a nymph and use that to, for healing purposes while I was doing my XP farming. This allowed me to do much more continuous farming without having to stop every couple of moments to heal up. This battle tower was helping us make great progress in leveling up our L menu skills. As you just saw there, many things were maxed out. Another successful day, another sleep. Day 39, and we're looking pretty cool in our new glasses, don't you think? We've reached new milestones and can now use dragon bone weaponry. So we make ourselves an enchanting setup. We've got lots of levels, we've got Lapis, we've decided to make ourselves a Dragonbone Crossbow and a Dragonbone Bow, and we think it's going to be time for enchanting. Have to wait for tomorrow, though. Day 40, Enchanting Day. We get Sharpness 4 on our Warhammer, it comes with Arc Slash 2, which is great. We've got Double Jump on our boots. We also got Protection 3 on our helmet, along with Unbreaking and Advanced Thorns. we got Unbreaking 
three on some boots to combine with the double jump, some protection four on there to combine with that as well. We got unbreaking three on our chest plate. We got power four on our dragon bone crossbow that also came with unbreaking three. Lifesteal two on another warhammer that came with the freezing as well. Now we've got quite a strong warhammer after we decided to combine those two, although freezing is a slight bit of a pain in the butt. We're feeling pretty good about ourselves, so take a quick selfie and decide to sleep. Day 41. Back to the XP grind of the Battle Tower. However, things are going much smoother now that we have better armor and better weapons. Much smoother indeed. We even decided to get a little ballsy now that we got some much better armor and better weapons. Lifesteal being a big factor in this. We now decide to get into the Battle Tower and actually start chopping away things from the inside. And then sleep. Day 42. Going inside was a little sketchy, especially with all the sticky mobs that were around. So we still decided to stay on the outside, play a little bit safe, but we are clearing these mobs much, much faster now, which is nice. And uh, we're pretty much just making our way up through the tower. Day 42 is nothing particularly exciting outside of that, except we are now able to kill these guys a lot faster. And you can see the levels are flying up there and we can, can actually sort of risk going inside sometimes and sleep. Day 43. Having finally completed that other battle tower, finally, we can move on. We've actually entered the dilapidated battle tower nearby to see if we can get some blaze rods. And right here, something interesting happens. We must get hit by a few blast-offs because we get absolutely yeeted. Now, the good thing about finding blazes here is that the strength bonus from being blighted only affects melee damage. Of course, blazes don't do any melee damage. So we're now quite uh, quite comfortable fighting these guys in close quarters. Now, something unfortunate happens right here. We just managed to get one hit on that blaze. And of course, it was sticky. And it yoinks my weapon out of my hand. Here's an instant replay for you. Falling, we're falling. Mob has sticky, we hit it. Weapon goes by, and we didn't even notice. And here's me, all lost and confused, looking for my weapon. Thinking, oh, it must be on the inside of the tower, right? Had no idea where I dropped it. And uh, as it was on the outside, just there in that quick moment, I, uh, yeah. Quite sad, Warhammer was uh, pretty strong. Uh, so we, we headed back home and moved our enchanting setup on the inside so we could spend our nights enchanting instead of the days. Day 44. We got ourselves a house nymph and named it Bird Boy because that was the name tag that was supposed to be used for a rock that we would use to soul gaze and get knowledge. Then we decided to do some fishing to see if we can spawn some silex so that we can start working towards our flying mount. We got quite lucky to be honest with our Silex spawning rates is that I think it's a 4.7% chance to spawn Silex per fishing attempt and we got two within about 20 fishes so that's pretty decent. Maybe. Day 45. We finally got our inside enchanting setup sorted as well as grabbing a rock and naming it so that we could start gaining the rock knowledge for our taming purposes. And we put the rock in the same cart as the nymph. Started gathering some knowledge. Breeding our Silex for the Silex meat. Making friends with Pixins. And then murdering them. <laughs> Slowly but surely. Only enough, I kind of forgot that rock are hostile at night. Time to upgrade our potion rings to rings of strength. Get those reforged with gold, of course. Try and get the undying quality on those. And then sleep for the first time in a few days. Day 46. We're feeding Silex. We're doing enchanting, getting some agility on our legs. We're getting knowledge from the rock. And then we need to go out and grab some XP. So we get in a fight with an invisible tree. A ginormous invisible tree.
Easy clap. And then just a little bit more XP farming. The reason we're doing this is so that we can get some more enchants done. Because we'd like to become stronger. Day 47. We fought all through the night. Then, as we needed more dragon scales to create more gear so that we could get enchants on those new pieces of gear and then combine our current gear with the new gear with the new enchants to make better enchanted gear, seeing as we didn't have many villagers yet, we go back to this location, which is actually a spot... This is the first waystone that we grabbed earlier on, where we noticed there was a couple of dragons. So we've returned back to that spot to take out the dragons that we saw earlier. Tango down. And then while grabbing lava for the bobble reforging station, we saw another dragon, which we took out really easily, and then got jumped by a tree. Bruh. Now we were also near this uh, cold biome while night was falling, and we need our ring of overclocking, so we decided to stick around, fight some strays, and see if we could get some luck with the ring of overclocking for the onk shield. However, it wasn't going well, so we slept. Or we tried to anyway, but hypothermia kicked in and prevented that. So we recalled back home and then did some reforging with our new bobble reforging station. Then we finally managed to get some sleep. Or not, because it wasn't night anymore. Bruh. Day 48. <laughs> Here's a little recap of our armor and enchants and baubles here on day 48. Not a lot happened on day 48, although we did find this absolutely raving Cyclops. He's having a good time. I want what he had. And while we were exploring, we decided to sleep in a cave. Day 49. Speaking of caves, we decided it was time to go caving to look for trolls. It would be very nice to be able to get our flying mount sometime soon. We've been doing the knowledge. We've been getting the Silex. Now I need to get our drops from the trolls so we can make our avian saddle. Pretty much straight away after we decided to go caving, we found this guy really quickly and we were hoping to get some good luck on the drops here. And we did. We got a tusk and a little bit of leather. But just not quite enough leather to be able to make this saddle. It would have been so good if we got it all in one. Gathering a little bit of silver ore so we can make some more glowing ingots. Found a couple of diamonds. Then we headed back up to the surface to collect some grapes for wine, as it was soon time to become an alcoholic. <laughs> more knowledge, more silex, wild berries to get started on our wine production, and we set up our little wine area. But even with all the experience we'd gained, we hadn't leveled up our farming high enough. So it was time to go out, do some killing, and you get some experience. This guy wasn't having any of it, though, as he just decided to run away as soon as we started fighting. Bruh. Wine production underway. Soulstone created in preparation for rock. Day 50. We had enough treats now to max out the knowledge and the soulstone, so we figured we might as well just get the rock tamed, and then we can finish getting the saddle. We had a little celebratory dance here. Very excited about our rock. After that, we headed back to the ice biome where we were going to wait for night and hopefully try and farm some more strays. We did really want to get the onk shield. Decided to farm some experience from this little structure while we were waiting and absolutely got hounded by these two teeny tiny little bastards. Now this was a silly decision, decided to pick a really bad fight with a dragon who immediately started firing at us and we immediately started regretting our decisions and he uh, charged straight up to the structure so we GTFO it out of there. Day 51. We headed back to this tier 5 dragon den to farm a little bit of emeralds and also to potentially look to take it out in a sort of safe manner. And got jumped by a Vapula on literally the first emerald that we mined.
We peeked our nose in on our little dragon buddy, and then as night fell, we went to sleep. Day 52. We wanted to fight this dragon as safely as possible, so we started mining out a big space to give us a decent opening so that we could pull back further into the cave and get some shots on it from a distance. If you're far enough away, you can take them out without them taking off and flying out, but unfortunately we didn't have enough DPS and it ended up flying and breaking out of its den. So, we had a chase on our hands. After defeating the beast, we decided to take a celebratory selfie. <laughs> After a long day of battling, it was time for sleep. Day 53. We decided to set the world ablaze in search of blazes, but we didn't really get any. So we went back home and decorated our house with the skulls of our fallen foes. Jumped on some grapes to create some wine. And then went back caving to look for more trolls because we still needed one more troll ladder. Nearly got killed by this damn light darkling and kind of noped out of that situation. Got down to one heart on our head, managed to just clutch our life with the water bucket and noped on out of there. We only need one more leather and a safer way to get that would be trading with ice villagers. So we checked out some cold biomes and then took a sleep. Day 54. We spent most of the day looking for this ice village and then realized we forgot to bring our sapphires. So we continued exploring, found a librarian with advanced efficiency 5, and took a sleep. Day 55. We also remember that we still needed the Stymphalian bird or Amphitheer feathers to complete the saddle. So we built up to this floating structure as these can give feathers for the saddle as well as flight potions, which might be useful later. Nothing. By the time we got back down to the village, it was nighttime and mobs had started spawning out of the lava. We dealt with the imp easily, but a variant Argus spawned and these guys are trouble. They're fast, they're hard to hit, they cause instability, they deal good amounts of damage. So, we noped on out of there at one and a half hearts and decided to go to sleep. Day 56. A dragon was causing mayhem nearby, so we decided it needed to be taken out, but he wasn't having any of that. Fired upon us immediately and we had to reposition quickly. It was hunting us down, so we had to back on out of there. Apparently he didn't like being shot and held a grudge because he was really hunting us down. We had to do a GTFO pretty quick. We managed to find refuge in a cave. But we came back with a better battle plan and finished him off. There's another one nearby as well, so we decided to take that one out and got jumped by a tremor. But funnily enough, our final bolt managed to find its mark and after the tremor was dead, we realized the dragon was too. As night came around, we found a new village, but this village had already started being swarmed with zombies. The villagers were being turned and we ended up in quite a sticky situation here. Now, fortunately, we were quite strong at this point and even though we were getting swarmed, we managed to stay alive. A lot of these guys had sticky. We kept dropping our weapon and getting tossed around and lightninged and on fire and all kinds of crazy stuff. It was a bit of a tense situation and we were definitely outnumbered and outgunned. So we decided to make a quick getaway and GTFO. Sleep time. Day 57. We had to go back and retrieve our spear, which had been lost in the shenanigans of the prior night. We noticed that there was a zombie holding on to it, so that was good. It wasn't going to despawn as long as the zombie held it. We made a little hole and took him out with our bow so we could get our spear back, because we didn't really want to lose that. Apparently, the zombies really liked touching my spear, <laughs> because every time it dropped, they kept picking it back up. But we got it back in the end, so it's all good. And uh, we ended up in a bit of a scrap with a number of crazy level infernals. And again, just getting tossed around and lightning that lit on fire. But this time we didn't back out. We had the benefit of the sun on our side, burning them. And we managed to take them all out one by one. Although, it was still a pretty damn good fight, because these guys were strong, and they had weakness, they had lifesteal, they had regen. They were really making things difficult for me here.
But we came out victorious. Thank Fork. After a bit of exploring, night fell and we decided to head home. We didn't want to sleep tonight though, we wanted to make use of the time, so we set up a brewing stand to get fire potions to craft our obsidian skull, and did some various crafting bits through the night. Day 58. Skull crafted, reforging, enchanting, generally just becoming more powerful, and then we needed to go out and fight. There was a storm outside, there was storm elementals around our base, so we needed to clear those guys out, and honestly, they are a massive pain in the butt with the paralysis they deliver, and floating around my head only hitting my head. Yeah, that happened. These guys are a massive pain in the butt, to be honest. They are one of the few mobs that can actually end up taking you out, even when you're quite strong, because they are fast, and they fly and hit your head, and they paralyze you. And we need to farm some XP for our enchanting. So we went around during the evening of day 58, making sure we got as much experience as we could to continue doing further enchanting. Once we got enough levels, it was time to head home and continue the enchanting process. Day 59. We headed back to the battle tower we had previously cleared to, one, test our strength now against the golem. Yeah, we believed we could beat him, and in fact we did quite easily. And also to gather the loot from the penultimate floor, as uh, we hadn't managed to get that loot because we hadn't removed the golem. So we got that, and then we headed back down into the caves to see if we could find more trolls. This is where we originally found our first troll, so we were kind of hoping we might find another one here to finally get our avian saddle. But alas, no luck. Went and farmed some grapes, and then had the most ridiculously absurd battle with the strongest skeleton I think I've ever seen. This guy just did not want to go down. But finally, in the end, he got trapped and we were victorious. A <laughs> little jig of celebration. Day 60. We found a dilapidated battle tower and we wanted to farm blazes for a couple of different reasons. And we found this absolute mess which was a battle tower combined with a roguelike dungeon, potentially even combined with a doom-like. It was just absolutely wild. There was witches and all kinds of crazy stuff going on in here. This damn bulwark witch just wouldn't go down. He took hardly any damage at all. He tried to clear out as many blazes as we possibly could, but things were spawning way too quickly. With all the infernal effects we were getting yeeted around, blasted into the sky, pulled by gravity. We still wanted to get some blaze rods though, so we ran in, tried to take out as many blazes as we possibly could. But there were just far too many things going on for us to even get a grip on what we were doing, or what was even going on. Even when we managed to trap one blaze in a corner where items were one v one, it ended up being a ridiculously tough fight because he had so many infernal effects. We stuck it out for a little while though, and we tried to get as much as we could. We did manage to get some blaze rods, some blaze powder. Now we got stuck in this cobweb here, and that got a little bit sketchy. I, mean, I don't like cobwebs, man. Me, me and cobwebs have a vendetta against each other. Fortunately, we managed to get out of that. And we tried to escape from one room straight into another room full of absolute chaos. And you know what? We weren't feeling comfortable, so we tried to GTFO out of there. But the scroll doesn't work if you're taking damage, and there was far too many things hitting us for us to actually use it. So we had to get some distance and move away. Our hearts were decreasing fast, so we had to get out of there. We did manage to break through a wall. Fortunately, we had the advanced efficiency on our pick and just managed to get enough distance. Just as we were trying to use our scroll, a zombie caught up to us. But fortunately, we had enough time between its hits to get out of there.
we decided to go out adventuring and apparently we felt like getting straight back into another ridiculous fight. The reason that we are trying to avoid sleeping is we want to make the most out of every day as we possibly can to help us gain more power as quickly as possible in terms of per day so that we have the best possible chance of completing the game within our 100 days challenge that we set. However, after this fight and after what was a pretty stressful day overall, we decided maybe sleeping was a good idea. Day 61, we decide to board a pirate ship to loot their booty. Looty the booty. Booty looty. Yes. <laughs> no, they didn't really have much booty to looty. We just wanted to fight some pirates. Arr. Then we continued exploring through the rest of the day. Found ourselves a new village and napped on the floor. Day 62. We still very much wanted to get our avian saddle, so we went back down to our troll hole to find some trolls and got jumped by this damn feller who managed to steal my spear from me. Damn zombies always want to touch my spear. And to slowly but surely take him out with our tools. There was no trolls, unfortunately, so we went back out exploring. Long day journeying. Didn't find a whole lot. But we did find another ice biome, which potentially had a ice village in it, which would be our next destination for our troll leather. However, on our way there, we got jumped by this army. We really didn't expect to get cut out like this, so to be honest, we just felt, on this occasion, let's just GTFO. Managed to get some distance and take a nap. Day 63. I remembered to bring my sapphires this time, and we ended up tra trading for the troll leather. Huzzah. The last thing we needed was some feathers. We found a swamp with some Stymphalian birds, but they were just flying away too quickly, and we couldn't catch up to them. We ended up getting caught in the song of a siren while the Stymphalian birds made their escape. I almost feel like they were working together. However, we did man manage to find a Stymphalian bird caught in a tree, took out a couple of them, and got our feathers. Now this is a big win for us because we will need the avian saddle to take on our first challenge, that being the Ender Dragon. Avian saddle achieve, celebratory dance done. And then we summon our rock and it flies off and leaves us forever. <laughs> it's JK, no. <laughs> we managed to get our saddle on and we are very excited about taking to the skies. Time for a well-deserved sleep. Day 64. We thought it might be time to take on the College of Evil now. We were much stronger than last time we had attempted it. But honestly, we were met with some annoying obstacles almost immediately. The fact that we didn't have a dragon's eye and fire was still causing us a lot of issue was, was one part of the problem here. We also didn't quite have enough damage overall to take these guys out super fast, and even just these first two spiders caused a little bit of an issue. The cobwebs are super annoying, so we tried to take those out because we really didn't want to get caught in those. That could be a easy death sentence, and that would be a difficult situation to get your loot back from. We also didn't have the most reliable way to heal either. We did have lifesteal on our weapon, of course, but there was no regeneration. And uh, we decided that was just a little bit too risky. So we decided to go home and jump on some berries. <laughs> Sleep time. Day 65. It was time to start taking steps towards our goals of eradicating evil from this world. We had hardly found any pearls, so we had to purchase some from a cleric to make our ender eyes and start looking for our stronghold. On the way to the stronghold, we did manage to find a village, and that village had an advanced mending villager, which was huge as we hadn't had any mending villagers so far. So he slapped a bunch of mending on our gear and took a nap. Day 66. We were getting closer and closer to our objective. Narrowing down the location, pinpointing where we would find our stronghold. As we got close to the point where we thought we would find it, we dug down, deep into the earth. And found the stronghold. 
After but a short time, we managed to find the portal. And I got hounded by a shitty little silverfish. And then more silverfish started, started spawning. And more! And with all their infer infernal effects, it was actually causing some issue. We had lost our spear. And they were continuing to spawn as we tried to escape their teeny tiny little wrath. Little bastards. We had lost where the portal was. We had lost our spear. But fortunately, we managed to get it all back. Little cheeky bastards. It was time for a final sleep before our fight. Day 67. The moment was finally here. We stood on the precipice of the portal and took a little selfie in commemoration of the moment. To be honest, we were probably just stalling a little bit to make sure that we were perfectly ready. Checked that our rock was ready to summon on the other side because we did not want to fall into the void. We prepared ourselves mentally and entered the portal. I quickly mounted up on Bird Boy and got ready for what would be the hardest battle we had faced yet. This is it, ladies and gentlemen. This is it.
Finally, after an entire day of intense battle, the beast was slain. Holy cow, what a tough fight that was. Day 68. We still had a mission to accomplish here in the end. There was resources we needed to gather and mobs we needed to farm. So we ventured forth into the end to gather our shulker shells and look for the heart of a shulker to create our Ankh shield. was a tense battle. These shulkers were stronger than any shulkers I had ever faced before. And without the benefit of strong looting enchantments on our weapon, it made the endeavor just that bit more difficult. Our heals were running low. We only had a few charges left on our med kit. We had consumed all of our golden apples. Yet we had not yet found what we had been looking for. Finally, after much fighting and many, many shulker kills, we managed to get our shulker heart. Our mission was accomplished. The hard part was done, but there was one more thing we wanted to grab before we left the end, which was the dragon head to allow us to craft our dragon's eye and finally stop being pestered by this pesky fire damage. After collecting the head and a few additional pearls as well, we figured our time here in the end was at an end. But of course, there is more evil that yet lives in this world, so our adventure is not at an end. This is not the end. Finally, with everything done and our health running low, we decide to warp scroll on out of there. Day 69. Nice. And this was a day of rest for us. We had made huge progress in our journey to do eradicate the world of evil. And we felt after such hard work, a day of rest was needed. So we enjoyed some wine sitting on a hammock on a lovely flowery beach beneath some birch trees. What a pleasant day this was, and what a way to celebrate. Job well done so far. We got pretty darn hammered as we watched the sun go down, as the sun set below the horizon. We contemplated our journey thus far. 
our wins, our losses, and what lay before us still. And we knew that we had only come partway through of what could be a even more perilous journey so far. And with that, on this day 69, we slept beneath the stars. To be continued.